Back in the year 2000, the Human Genome Research Project announced it had finally completed sequencing the entire DNA of human beings. Now, that's true-ish, but not quite true. Then in 2003, they announced that they had finally finished sequencing the entire genome or the complete genetic code for humans. And that is mostly true. Now, I keep saying it's mostly true because there's actually some parts that are not sequenced. For example, in the middle of uh, chromosomes, you have a portion of the DNA called a centromere. And because of the way that inside of a cell it's tightly wound, etc., it cannot currently be easily sequenced. And there's other parts of the chromosome, like the telomeres, that are also technically extremely challenging. But they did complete what they set out to accomplish, and that's to create a rough map that scientists can use to help research all sorts of genetic conditions and treatments, etc. Now, some of the in interesting um, things that we found through the Human Genome Research Project, for example, is that we only have roughly 24,000 genes. Now, you may be saying only, but at the time, that was surprising because originally humans, ha we had thought we had roughly 100,000 genes. And to figure out that we, these incredibly complex things, are done with only 24,000 genes, that's pretty surprising to scientists. They also found out that maybe 1.5% of our DNA is actually used for uh, instructions on how to build proteins. What's the other 98.5% used for? Well, some of it's used for coding how to build RNA, like uh, tRNA and ribosomal RNA. But there's also a lot of regulatory information in there. Then there's a lot of other stuff that some people used to call junk, but now other people are saying, hey, maybe that stuff is important. There's lots of stuff that's in the Human Genome Research Project's data that we have still yet to finish um, mining that data. It's kind of like somebody gave you a map of a town and then said, <laughs> have fun exploring. You don't know who's in those houses. Some of the houses you open up and you go, nobody here. Others you open up and it turns out clowns live there. Yay! Other ones it turns out to be the psycho clowns, the ones with chainsaws. Mm. So we have a lot of work to be doing in the mining of this information doing the exploration. That is actually a whole field of science exploration called bioinformatics. Now, yet more stuff is coming out that is really interesting. One thing that I found fascinating, there was a scientist who happened to have access to a lot of his own equipment, and so he wound up doing in maybe a year or two what it took 13 odd years for the uh, genome project to do. He sequenced his own genome, and in just his DNA, he found roughly 1.6 million single bases that were different than the average individual assembled through this project. And that's telling you a lot of really cool information that we, even though we look so much alike at our cellular level, at our molecular level, we have these intriguing little differences. And sometimes one base being different can cause huge differences. And so that's one of the reasons why this stuff fascinates me so much, to figure out what's truly inside of us and why we are the way we are.